Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to Grim Dawn. Grim Dawn is a ARPG very much in the same style of games as Diablo, Torchlight, Torchlight 2, Path of Exile, Marvel Heroes, etc, etc. There are many more that I'm probably missing. But unlike hundreds, nay, well yeah, probably like hundreds of Diablo clones out there, it probably it's not fair, by the way, to call it a Diablo clone. I don't mean anything offensive to the game or to Diablo by that. It's just the way that people are calling these games. But like a huge amount of people are calling them like that. And it's just sort of to clarify things. It's not a clone of Diablo. It's a game in the same genre and the same style. Which doesn't make it a clone, but... You know, people call it clones just for clarity's sake. Let's, let's say it's a Diablo clone, even though it's kind of not. Essentially, it's better to say it's a clone of something than say it's a game in the same style as all the games that I just named and some. Um, so there's that, I suppose. Anyways, let's get into... This, well, these will, be, these will be my first impressions of this game. This is so, again, this is not a review. These are just my first impressions. I've played some maybe three or four hours of this game. And uh, don't trust Steam, by the way, it lies. I spent way, way more time off tabbed. Anyways, it is a video game that is set in a very dark and grim universe. Unlike something like Torchlight and Marvel Heroes, this is a very grim... <laughs> grim Dawn, get it? It's a very grim universe, it's very dark, it's very gory, it's... it's... yeah. Definitely not uh, cartoony or, um, you know, stereotypical with heroes and stuff in any way, shape, or form. First of all, I'm going to start with the options menu, and I'm going to praise the living hell out of the options menu. Let's begin with that, shall we? First, general. Uh, all of this is very nice. You can actually turn off displaying damage and crits and stuff like that, which is very useful for some of you. Background FPS. Oh god. I did not expect that to actually... Yeah, wow. Okay. Uh... Ha. Well then. Didn't expect it to actually change anything because I didn't change any of the settings. Moving on. Key bindings, we will talk about these a bit later, they are all fully rebindable, however the gamepad... We'll talk about it, okay? Audio, look at this. One, two, three, four, five different audio sliders. Five of them, well, four, because this one is a master volume one, but still. Some games don't even have an audio menu, <coughs> chasing dead. <coughs> A game I reviewed on uh, not so long ago. But more importantly, you can change your primary audio... Well, no, you can change your audio device. Set it to primary, I have speakers, I have SPDIF out, I have a TV monitor, and this thing. It works. You change it, apply, click apply, and it actually works. I played this on my TV with a gamepad some time ago. It worked perfectly. More games need to have this. It's really convenient. I know not a lot of people are ever going to change this, but for streamers, for YouTubers, stuff like that, and for people that have more audio devices, it's very, very useful. Especially for anyone that has a TV hooked up to their PC as well. Video. Uh, full screen windowed or windowed borderless, anti-aliasing, textures, shadows, anisotropic filtering. Pretty standard. The UI scale is very nice as well as these things, and you can even change your render device. I have one graphics card, that's this one, and two display devices, as I mentioned, the TV and the monitor. You can switch here, click apply, and it works. Again, a lot of games, a lot of games nowadays don't have this. I really love to see stuff like this in the menu. Key bindings, though, as I said, the gamepad doesn't quite work. It does, it does to the extent of, I'm actually going to plug it in right now, here we go. So, here we go. I am playing with the gamepad right now. First of all, the mouse cursor doesn't disappear, which I'm a bit disappointed by, but let's move it out of the way. You see how my controller scheme changes? You can, you can see down here, right? You see how this changes? 
it's a problem. Uh, especially if I want to change, for example, what this button here does. Right? It's a problem. If I want to talk, and this is especially the, the biggest problem probably, is if I want to talk to some of the NPCs, I need to rebind all of the buttons in order to actually manage to proceed with the conversation. Because all the buttons are mapped to either these things or these things over here. You can't actually talk to him without rebinding. Now, fair enough, there doesn't... There doesn't uh, sorry. Blah, try again. This doesn't mean anything in particular. It just means that you need to spend... Five, six, maybe ten minutes rebinding your keys on the controller. However, this is a tad annoying. And I wish the controller worked off the get-go, kind of like it does in other games. But that's pretty much my biggest and perhaps only uh, major complaint of the game is that I wish the controller worked a little bit better. As far as the content of the game goes, I am right now a level 17 demolisher, which you could have seen back there a minute ago. Let's see if I can open it up again. Here we go. You also have this thing. This is called devotion. This is basically points you get to put in the constellations, stars, or whatever you want to call them. I'm getting attacked, aren't I? Yes, I am. Sorry. It's, uh, yep. Let's get out of here, you know what? Let's, let's, uh... There we go. Where is it? Here we go. This is all the loot I managed to collect. This is my gear. Uh, you do very much in the same style as something like Torchlight and Diablo. You get points in your skills. You get points in your stats that you get to put. Uh, a choice of three right now. Physique, Cunning, and Spirit. I've been maxing out my Cunning for the most part with a little bit of Physique as well. Now, let's get over to the, uh, where is it? Ah, Devotion. Yes. This is all the stuff that one character can get. Are you sold yet on the game? Are you, you, you should be sold. So, I picked this Falcon thing. I commit my points to this. Then I can jump over here, jump on one of these, one of this, what was this, a hammer and an anvil? I like it. Yeah. The amount of content in this screen alone baffles me. Which is not to say, again, don't get me wrong, which is not to say that this is the first time something like this has ever happened. No, not at all. However, it is absolutely brilliant to see something like this um, actually be a thing in a game and, you know, to see it work very, very well. It's been a while since I leveled up, so let's show you that. It's almost like I planned this. Shush. Shush. Anyways, I am a demolitionist. You can actually choo uh, choose your class. You can choose two classes, which is a bit novel and interesting. If I, if I wish to, I can commit to this class as well. How advisable that is, I'm not sure. Again, I don't have a lot of experience with this thing, but it is what it is. We can level up different classes if we choose to do so. I have this thing, uh, Explosive Strike, let's say, and this thing, and put three points in my health and uh, energy. There we go. Also, I have a Nightblade here. I haven't committed any points to it, but I've just sort of selected it as my second class. Which I absolutely don't have to do right now, and I won't. Uh, but yes, you can select, like, you can be two classes at the same time. Which is lovely. I should clarify, I've played this game very little. Maybe this is a very wrong build. Look, it's getting me through the game thus far, I don't know. Anyways, onto the actual gameplay, and the most important feature of all... No, not enemy variety. Loot. There's tons of the stuff, right? There is tons of the stuff. Just like you would expect from a good ARPG to have. Uh, you have your shotguns, blunderbusses, cannons, pistols, muskets, sniper rifles. Is that everything as far as ranged firearms go? Probably not. Crossbows. Smaller crossbows, bigger crossbows. 
this, okay? There's tons of stuff. Shields, magic weapons, revolver. This is an actual revolver. Yes, it is. Magic ranged weapons as well. It looks like a firearm, but it's actually magical. As far as armor is concerned, again, uh, several different slots, and very importantly, all the armor is different visually. They do go for a similar style and aesthetic every now and again. You do, you do see some of it repeating itself, but that's besides the point. It's all different. You change your headgear, your, it changes on your character. You change your torso, you know, I guess, you know, a jacket or uh, whatever armor you have, it changes on your character, which is very important and very, very admirable from pretty much any RPG, as we're seeing more and more ARPGs and MMOs that simply don't bother to put this in. Anyways, what about the actual combat? What do I think of the actual combat that I've experienced thus far? Well... It is extremely responsive, it is very fluid, it makes sense. Uh, it's easy, it's it's not easy by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, what well, people are calling this from the many a positive reviews and uh, both user and critique reviews that I've read on Steam and other websites. People are calling this what Diablo should have been for a more, you know, hardcore audience. Now, I'm not sure whether that's true or not. I guess you can decide that on your own. I'm not going to take a stance in this uh, particular argument, but what I will say is the game is difficult. I'm playing this on Veteran, which you can actually see on the screen there. So I, I'm not even lying. I have proof. Haha. -ha. Anyways, uh, it's the hardest difficulty possible for a first playthrough, which is good. It's a good decision. I died a couple of times, it's easy to get swarmed, uh, but it does require skill. It's not just a level check and a gear check, right? It's not just the better gear you have, the better you're going to do, whilst this, of course, is true in all RPGs. Well, yeah, pretty much in all RPGs. Maybe Dark Souls is different. If you completely suck at the game, then you're going to die anyway, but it doesn't exactly count, does it? But yeah, in all games of this style, it is true to a certain extent. Skill is also pretty damn important, as uh, if you dodge correctly, if you combo your abilities correctly, and if you pay attention to where your character is uh, on the terrain, and you know, how to use cover and, and the terrain to your advantage and stuff like that, how to group enemies up together, you can take on bosses and regular mobs that are higher level than you, without, you know, getting yourself in too much trouble. Uh, for example, I think I was level 10, and I killed a level... Ooh, don't get me wrong. Don't believe me on this, but I think it was a level 14 boss. Which was, I know, it was a decently difficult fight, but it wasn't anything impossible. Again, it just had to combo up a little bit, I had to back off in, in a couple of situations and run away, but he was defeated. Anyways, so, combat plus for me. It's very enjoyable to play. It does lack in one area, though, and people might find this a little bit, um... I don't know, you might like this, but you might not. Again, depends on your subjective feelings towards this. What is this? Uh, the spells. Namely, for this particular character, there's not that many of them, so I can't really show you. But, uh, essentially, my left click is a spell. It is a spell. It's Fire Strike, and it costs 7 energy, but with my high energy pool and lack of other abilities, I can use this as my regular attack all the time. As well as some of my grenades and stuff that I have with me. The problem lies, however, in the fact that when you do cast a spell, it isn't all too impressive. The visuals, that is. The damage that it does and stuff, of course, you mitigate that. You level it up or you don't, and depending on that, you do de your decent damage again or you don't. However, visually, it's not that impressive. And fair enough, a regular spell like this shouldn't be visually impressive. However, a powerful grenade, which does up to 990 damage, which is pretty much my entire health pool's worth of damage... That, I, in my opinion, should be a little bit more explosive, and right now it does that. 
It's kind of brief. It kind of goes puff, right? I think Diablo Torchlight, and again, I'm sick of naming all the other ARPGs that I know of. But yes, I think in other games, especially Marvel Heroes, especially Marvel Heroes, did a better job on that. Now again, you might say it fits better with the aesthetic if all of your spells aren't exactly, you know, super blowing out of, blowing out of proportions and, and stuff like that. And yes, yes, I will accept that, but again, I guess it's a, a thing of uh, personal taste and preference. Moving on, though, with the gameplay and my... This is almost turning into a review, a review, a review but again, I, I, will, I will hasten to add, I have not played too much of this game, I haven't gotten to the end of the game, and as a result, I don't feel ma uh, comfortable making a review of it... Uh, ...yet at any rate. What I will say, though, as a side note, is that it is very, very addictive. I played this thing till something like, I don't know, 4 a.m. last night. Uh, completely lost track of time. Uh, I started playing it last night, obviously, and uh, yeah, it's, it's I, I've loved every minute of it. It's, it. it's very, very fun. You might have a problem if you're playing something like uh, Path of Exile or any of the other games that I already mentioned. I'm sick of mentioning it. I really am. I'm sorry. But if you're really committed to those, ga those games, then you might have a problem with, I don't know, not changing to this game, but starting up another RPG that might get you sucked in completely. But, you know, Regardless, here we are, um, where was this train of thought going? This train of thought sailed away, apparently, to quote the great northern lion. Uh, oh yes, the terrain. So, you have an outdoors area, and I'll show you the map. Actually, yeah, that's a good idea, let's, let's show the map. This is the world map, uh, don't worry, there's more. This, <laughs> this is your starting area, and I'm getting attacked. Sod off. Sod. Off. Sod off. I'm trying to do a video. Sod. The F off. There's a lot of them. Okay, let's let's show you some more combat and then we'll, uh, then we will, we will discuss the map. Uh, essentially, my point is, there's tons of map. There is tons of content, as you can see both from leveling up, both from the loot that you get from enemy variety, which I will talk about in its own segment in a bit. But, uh, yeah, there's there's tons of variety in, in all shapes and forms and, and sizes and aspects of the game. Let's just get rid of the last undead here. Here we go. This is your sort of, um, this is the right lane of the map, and it's the noob lane. Uh, this is what I'm going to choose to call that, because this is where you first go and complete your first basic quests and dungeons and stuff like that. We'll talk about those in a second. This is the left side of the map, which I haven't got to, ever. That area looks very interesting, but uh, there's more. Is that the end? No, there's more. Is that the end? Nope, there's more. That's a lot of map. That is a lot of content for you to grind through and clear out. And I do mean a lot. Add to that the complexity of the skill trees. The Again, I say complexity. I use, use that with a pinch of salt. Uh, take that with a pinch, a pinch of salt, though. It is complex in all the right ways. It's complex as in you can hit that button... Level up your character however the hell you want. For example, I'm going to pick an occultist here to be my, like, second class, let's say. And you can level him up as a demolitionist occultist. You can pick some of these things. You can go in any direction you want, which is all fine and dandy. And then you can replay all that, obviously, with different characters and stuff. But add to that the fact that there is so much map and quests and content. For the price that they're asking, it's really impressive. It really, really is. But the terrain itself. Other than there being a lot of it, uh, it really is varied. It It's very, very different. I haven't had the chance to experience too much of that. I've seen, like, three or four different completely different areas in the game. One of these, like, urban areas with a lot of houses and stuff, which is this estate, the village south of here. 
Next, I was in a swamp, which was very amusing. But uh, that's not all I mean about the terrain, though. You get this outside area, which has, again, different, different places for you to visit. However, you also get dungeons. Again, something like Torchlight did, uh, did it in, in their game as well. For all the outside area that you get in the game, there is a equal and opposite amount of dungeons, which are these, well, exactly what they are, kind of like that cellar was back there. And uh, this is how you go back to town, by the way. You just open up a portal for free and teleport back. There we go. Uh, that's a very cool picture, by the way. Anyways, besides, completely besides the point and irrelevant. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and sell some of our loot and do a bit of inventory management while I tell you about some, of the, some other aspects of the game that I haven't mentioned yet. Enemy variety, namely. Um, there's really not a lot to be said about it. It's there. There's a lot of it. Are you sold yet? <laughs> I swear I'm not sponsored by the developers of this game. Anyway, anyway, though I wish I were. Anyways. There is a ton of enemy variety. Absolutely. And it's surprising because you... I expected, at least initially, to see some enemy variety at the start, though not a lot of it. I was thinking maybe a couple of level 1 zombies, a bigger level 2 zombie, a slower and a faster zombie, something like that, and we're done, right? Nope. Scorpion spiders, goblins, rats, um... Flies, giant blood-sucking mosquitoes is what I'm going to choose to call them. And... Was that everything? No, it can't be. There was more. Oh, yes. Ogres, giants, snakes, reptiles. I mentioned spiders already. Um... And rotting fiends, which I guess are a, just a special type of zombie. In the level 1 area. Yeah. Yeah. In the level 1 area. Well, not level 1, but like the first 3 or 4 levels. You can imagine this continued through the game up to level 18 where I am right now. Yeah. Enemy variety... Check. This game is ticking all of the checkboxes. It really, really is. What about the story, though? Uh, the story is very important to a lot of people playing RPGs, even ARPGs. Standing for action RPGs for those uninitiated. It, well, um, to call it completely original would not be correct. To call it unoriginal would also be a great understatement. It's interesting. It It is. In action RPGs, I'm not really a huge fan of the stories. I'm not really paying attention to them a lot. I'm more into the grinding, the loot, the quests, and the sheer gameplay. However, I understand that a huge portion of the players are really into the story, and I guess often that depends on the type of game itself. Whereas I would say that the strength of this game lies in the gameplay, absolutely. The story is very interesting. It is mysterious and, which is, in my personal opinion, great. It's not spoon-fed to you right at the start. You need to investigate the lore, you need to find the lore, journals, reports, etc, etc, to learn what the hell is going on. The start of the game is very mysterious, and you don't really know what the hell's going on. You're given a basic idea by the people that are in the same circumstances as you. However, there is a lot of questions that remain unanswered, even at this point in time. So, it's an interesting and mysterious story that will keep you engaged. That said, there is something a lot more to it than that. This game, I kid you not, has consequences, and by that I don't mean if you click the wrong button this NPC will attack you. This game has actual consequences, as in you decide to accept someone into the town, a stranger out in the wilderness, 
And he just might murder someone in the town, right? Because he just might be crazy enough to do that. You don't know. There are different choices. There are branching choices. Which is extremely rare in an ARPG. There's only so many very good ARPGs that do that, and more importantly, do that very well. This one makes that list. So again, ticking all of those proverbial checkboxes. Anyways, graphics, as I said, very grim, very dark, and despite where you are, there's still sort of this, like, muddy, gritty feel to everything. Whether you're in a swamp, a forest, whether it's day or night, whether you're in a dungeon or a cellar or a cave somewhere, doesn't matter. It still pretty much keeps the same type of mood and aesthetic, which is not bad in any way, shape or form, though some might prefer more... Uh, wild and more uh, more noticeable differences in the aesthetic. Take a look at something like Stalker, that game had pretty much the same mood through and through, through the tr trilogy of the entire game series, and it did incredibly well. So, it reminds me, however it should be said, of Warhammer. Warhammer Fantasy, especially uh, something like Vermintide, uh, beginning of the end times. Or, what, what's that other one? Uh, Mordheim, City of the Damned, I believe the game is called. The top-down, turn-based strategy game. It reminds me of that a lot as well. It has, of course, nothing to do story-wise with, um, with the Warhammer universe. However, you can see clearly and, and make some connections. There's Skaven in Warhammer, there's giant rat people here as well, though they are quite different and not as uh, advanced, maybe, in what, they're, what they use as equipment. Though, then again, calling Skaven machinery advanced is a gross overstatement. They do have miniguns, though, so there's that, I suppose, me being a huge Warhammer fan, in case you couldn't tell. Anyways, I do appreciate, I do appreciate the different uh, nods that this game makes to Warhammer and uh, clearly takes, maybe not takes inspiration, but um, is similar to Warhammer in a lot of aspects. As far as the gameplay itself is concerned, I think I don't really need to talk about any more, like I'm talking about the health and the way you attack and stuff like that. I don't think that I really need to explain any of that, I mean, it's really obvious. You have your constitution here, which is a very novel and interesting idea, one that I don't often see. So, the story is, um, well, basically, well, yeah, I guess, um, not literally the story, but it goes like this, essentially, if you lose health, there's this yellow bar that runs through your health bar, and that yellow bar will deplete and recharge your health. Once you run out of constitution, that being the yellow bar, you will need to use a health um, a health potion. However, mid-combat, this yellow thing will not recharge your health. So if mid-combat you get to, I don't know, 10% of your health, you might want to pop a potion regardless. Health is very important as is, of course, well, duh, you know, no shit, Sherlock. But yes, it's very important to manage it in this game, alongside, you know, doing some mental calculations of whether you should heal with a potion or not. That said, I have accumulated a huge number of potions, but then again, I was pretty conservative and held back with their usage. As far as spells go, I've mentioned them. I have a couple of grenade spells right now, and I've tried a mage character in uh, as like my second character, and he has a lot more interesting spells, but his basic attacks are weaker, of course. Uh, at least for now, obviously. I'm still uh, that's, that character is even lower level than this one. Once again, first impressions, not an actual review, but besides the point, uh, very fun, very fun, absolutely. Which is also another, uh, brings me, uh, you know, a, a point further and uh, in favour of uh, this game being good and the gameplay being quite solid. I once ran into a dungeon which had this green mist in it. And the mist would slowly tick down your health. 
and the longer you stayed in the dungeon, the more poison damage you would take. Which meant that you need to get rid of those rats in the dungeon and kill the boss as quickly as you can. Do burst damage as quickly as you can. And, while doing that, manage also running back for air and running to these isolated, elevated positions to basically not take damage. Poison damage, that, that, that being. Which added a completely new and interesting dynamic to the game. And it refreshed what was beginning to feel like repetitive gameplay. And the deal, I guess the deal is, I suppose, with games like these, it's always going to get repetitive. It's, you grind, you're grinding in this thing. You really are, you're leveling, you're grinding, you're going through the story. It does get repetitive. I guess the argument can be made that every RPG eventually gets repetitive, and that's true, but uh, this game really does its best to not be all that repetitive. And uh, it really does succeed, at least in my opinion right now, initially. But that would be pretty pretty much everything, I think, regarding the game itself. Um, it is not a new game, I should probably mention this at the start, it is not a new game. Why am I doing a first impressions of it now? It's on sale on Steam, and people are losing their minds over how good it is, apparently. The reviews recently have been extremely positive, and I can see why. I'm hooked on this thing, I absolutely am. No shame in admitting it, I am absolutely hooked to this game, I love it, and uh, I suggest that you guys give it a shot. Uh, you have my full recommendation to pick this up if you have an interest, a, you know, any remote interest in ARPGs, especially if you have friends to play with. If you have friends to play this game with, just go ahead and pick it up without thinking. If you're more of a solo guy like myself when it comes to ARPGs, in that case, I recommend that you take this review, uh, and again, not review first impressions video with a pinch of salt, and read up some more reviews of the actual game before spending your money, but that said, you still do have my full recommendation to buy this for what it's worth. That will be pretty much everything. My name is Majagonaut. Please remember to like and subscribe down below if you enjoyed this video. And to my subscribers, tell me, would you like to see more Grim Dawn? Uh, I'm thinking about live streaming this game a little bit and uh, maybe even posting some more videos of this on the channel. So do go ahead and tell me what you think of this game. Also, one tiny little detail left. This is how you collect lore from the game. Well played. Well played, game developers. Really well played. Yeah, there we go. Anyways, as I said, my name is Ben Dragonaut, and uh, until next time, take care, and bye-bye.